Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to explain the display property in HTML and CSS. Now, HTML elements, they have a default display value. They're either block level or inline. An element that is block level starts on a new line and takes up the entire width available. Inline elements do not start on a new line. The width of that element is limited to what is needed. A few examples of block level elements would include, but are not limited to, header elements, div elements, paragraph elements, form elements, header elements, and footer elements. Inline elements include, but yet again are not limited to, span elements, anchor elements, and image elements. By utilizing the display property, we can specify if and how an element is displayed. We can set an element to be a block level, inline, inline block, or not displayed at all. Here's a few examples. We'll create a div element, with the inner text being div and a span element with the inner text being span. Let me zoom in a little. Let's go to our style sheet. For my div element, I will set the background color to be red. For my span element, I will set the background color to be blue. That's good. Div is a block level element it's going to take up the entire width available. Span isn't, it only takes up the necessary space needed to display that element. Even if I were to extend the width of the browser, my div element takes up the entire width. My span element stays the same because it's inline. We can apply a width and a height to a block level element like this. Width will be 100, height will be 100. However, for an inline element, the width and height wouldn't apply. You can see that our span element stays the same size. By utilizing the display property, we can change the behavior of these elements, how they're displayed. If I set my div element to be block, well, it already is a block level element. There's no change. If I set my span element to display as a block level element, well, then we can apply a width and a height. These two elements are displayed as a block. All of this extra white space is allocated for each of these elements, their block level. If I were to create a paragraph, let me shrink this a little bit. I'll create some sample text. I'll type lorem, then hit tab. These are not within paragraph tags, just so you know. All of this space is reserved for my block level elements. That's important later. Now let's go back to our style sheet. If I change the display property to be in line, guess what's gonna happen? Well, both of these elements are in line now. We can't apply width or height properties to these elements. They only take up as much room as necessary. All other content is displayed in line with them. Then there's inline block. It's much like inline, but we can also apply a width and a height. These two elements are no longer taking up the entire width of my viewport. If I were to increase the size of my window, we can display content in line with these inline blocks. You can see that the text is lined up. Then there's none. None will effectively erase that element as if it's gone. If I revert these displays to inline block, there's also the visibility property, which is fairly similar to display. If I set visibility to be hidden with our div element, this element is hidden, but it's still taking up space as if it was still there. It's kind of like it's invisible. Whereas in if display was set to none, it's as if it no longer exists. The next element will take its place. All right, everybody, that is an introduction to the display property. We can display elements as a block, inline, inline block, none, or by utilizing the visibility property, we can hide them. And that is an introduction to the display property in CSS.